Thomas and Jackie Hawks were the American Dream from Prescott, Arizona. Thomas was a former probation officer and a bodybuilder. His wife, Jackie Hawks, was always his bedrock amidst the excruciating work life. Thomas and Jackie Hawks lived contentedly aboard a 55-foot yacht called the Well Deserved. They sailed for two years around the Gulf of California and the Pacific Ocean in complete bliss. In 2004, the couple who spent their lives working were ready to retire and spend more time with their grandson. They deemed a change was in order. So they decided to sell their vessel and set up a home in Newport Harbor to be closer to their bundle of joy, James. Painfully, however, Skylar Preciosa de Leon and Jennifer Henderson buried this dream. So who are de Leon and Henderson? Why did they kill Thomas and Jackie Hawks? What happened to the killers? We'll unravel everything here. But before we do, please kindly subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more spine-chilling videos. In mid-November 2004, the cheery couple posted an advertisement for the sale of their luxurious yacht. Skylar de Leon quickly answered their ad, and the couple was joyous to have found a potential buyer. At first, Thomas and Jackie were not too comfortable dealing with de Leon and the two associates that followed her to view the vessel. Still, however, the couple became at ease when de Leon's pregnant wife and their toddler joined the conversation. On November 15, 2004, Thomas and Jackie Hawks were spotted heading out of the harbor of their yacht, but they were never seen again. The yacht was in its usual spot, but the owner was not there. So where could they have gone? Well, they might have gone on an unplanned final voyage pending the sale of their yacht, the family thought. The Hawks waited, but the beloved couple never came back. It became apparent that something was wrong, and the search for the adorable couple started. The family alerted Jim Hawks, Thomas's older brother and a former police chief in Carlsbad, and he rushed to the berth where the yacht was normally anchored when not at sea. Jim carefully walked around the condition of the yacht and noticed some differences in how the boat was hastily anchored, which was unusual for Thomas. Jim felt that something was amiss. He contacted the Newport Beach Police to file a missing person report. The police visited and found what was believed to be a bloody print on the yacht's exterior, but forensics proved that the discoloration was rust rather than blood. On November 29, 2004, the police invited Skylar de Leon for an interview on how the boat became hers. She told the police that she had legitimately purchased the vessel from the couple, Thomas and Jackie Hawks, and even showed proof of purchase documents to let them know that it was legitimate. She also claimed to have saved the money used in purchasing the boat as a child actor who appeared in commercials and claimed that at 14, she appeared in the series Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, an unlikely story as there is not enough proof to back her claims. She further stated to the police that the couple had left their money inside their car, denied ever having been in the car with them, and named Alonzo Machain, a former SEAL beach jailer, as a witness to the $250,000 purchase and omitted the presence of another party, John Kennedy. How could De Leon cuff out $250,000 for a yacht when she and her family lived in a converted garage at her friend's parents' home? It didn't seem plausible that they would have that money on hand. As a result, the police pressed further and De Leon started singing. De Leon revealed how she was involved in large-scale drug trafficking and had been to hell and back looking for money to buy the boat she could use to launder. The police let it go. For the time being, she could be a way to reach the culprits they hoped. On November 26, 2004, De Leon and Henderson tried to access the Hawks bank account for Mexico. The Hawk family notified the police and filed a missing persons report with the Carlsbad, California Police Department. The detectives invited De Leon again, but she claimed the late couple gave them access to facilitate the purchase of a property she had been attempting to secure for them in Mexico. De Leon and Henderson provided documents showing the couple's signatures, and every file was properly witnessed and notarized. The detectives invited both the notary and witness and confirmed that the signatures were legitimate. But they still found something on Skylar De Leon. She was still on probation for armed burglary. There's some more information there, but we won't rush her, the detectives thought to themselves. By December, a full investigation was launched. 
The police started from the Honda CRV owned by the missing couple, which they found across the Mexican border in Ensenada. The detectives were astonished that the criminals did not link the person in possession of the car at the time with the family. When pressed further, Skylar de Leon said it was a gift from the missing couple, conflicting with her previous statement that Thomas and Jackie Hawks lived in the car the last time she saw them. Next, the police presented the car to forensic experts looking for evidence that de Leon had been inside the vehicle despite her denial. While the detectives were waiting for the forensic results, they learned that Skylar de Leon had submitted a request to their probation officer for permission to leave the country for work. Amid an investigation, Skylar de Leon must be hiding something from us, the police assumed. This made them more convinced that Skylar had a hand in the couple's death, but they had no evidence to arrest her for the murders of Thomas and Jackie Hawks. Trust the police. They used the previous drug trafficking and money laundering admissions to arrest de Leon and prevent her from leaving the country until they finished the investigation. A few days later, forensics determined that DNA from the dashboard knob matched that of de Leon, thus refuting her claims that she had never been in the Honda CRV. The detectives invited the notary for the interview's second half just to get more holes in her story. She admitted that she did not see the couple sign the paperwork and that Skylar de Leon had paid her to backdate the documents to November 15, 2004 and apply a notary seal to them for authenticity. So, the notary wasn't directly involved in the couple's murder, but still had breached the notary bond, which stated that the signer should witness the actual signing of a document. Machain, another supposed witness, fled to Mexico after learning that the death penalty awaited the murderers. In 2005, the police agreed to take off the death penalty and work out a deal with Machain. However, he returned home, confessed to being part of the gang, and piled blame on de Leon for convincing him that the couple were evil and shouldn't be spared alive. He said this in exchange for a reduced sentence. Machain revealed that he was present when the couple was lured to sea by de Leon for a test run to show that the yacht was in good shape for sale. She mentioned Kennedy as part of de Leon's business team and heavily pregnant Jennifer Henderson, who remained on shore during the voyage. During the meeting, de Leon and her gang forced the couple to sign the documents transferring the boat's title and power of attorney to de Leon and Henderson, Machain revealed. He added that de Leon overpowered Thomas and handcuffed him while he subdued and handcuffed his wife, Jackie Hawks. Then they taped the couple's mouths and eyes and tied them to an anchor while Skylar de Leon navigated the well-deserved into deeper waters, where they drowned in the deepest part of the Pacific. Based on the information gathered, the police arrested Skylar de Leon, Jennifer Henderson, Alonzo Machain, and John Fitzgerald Kennedy for the callous murders of Tom and Jackie Hawks. On October 20th, 2008, de Leon was convicted of first-degree murder of Thomas and Jackie Hawks in Mexico in 2003 under the guise of a lucrative investment. On October 2007, Skylar de Leon was sentenced to two terms of life in prison without parole while John Kennedy was found guilty of two counts of first-degree murder and subsequently sentenced to death on May 1, 2009. Alonzo Machain testified against the gang and pleaded guilty to two counts of voluntary manslaughter, kidnapping, and robbery. Thus, he received a reduced sentence of 20 years and four months in prison on June 15, 2008. Myron Sandora Gardner Sr., another silent participant in the gruesome murder of Thomas and Jackie Hawks, got four years in jail after pleading guilty. In 2009, de Leon, still on death row at San Quentin State Prison as the moratorium on lethal injection had prevented her execution, was afforded hormone therapy that partially feminized her appearance before she legally identified as female, and her name was changed to Skylar Preciosa de Leon. In 2020, Skylar de Leon said that she knows there are no words that can help the Hawks family. She revealed how her father, a drug dealer and a tyrant, would abuse them physically and allow others to abuse them sexually. However, it's really bad to see two loving individuals who did everything right so they could enjoy their retirement, being inhumanely tortured to death by selfish people. What do you think about the punishments cast on the murderers, especially Skylar de Leon? Is it fair and square compared to the proximity of the crime? Tell us in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.